Welcome to your Schlumberger training video. Throughout the four modules and documentation stored in the Extra Features section, you will receive a comprehensive briefing on areas of technical design, the processes that underpin the work you do, and we will seek to develop a greater working understanding of maintenance and fault-finding issues. To fully understand the function of the WACQB and WACSS23 packages, we must consider the pneumatic aspects in several distinct stages or phases. First of all, we have the induction and compression of atmospheric air. Air is drawn into the first stage of compression via a micronic filter which removes airborne contaminants and other unwanted matter that could prove harmful to the function of the compressor. Each stage of compression relies on a rising falling piston, not unlike a general automotive design. However, unlike automotive designs, there is no camshaft. Neither are there any push rods or overhead valves, other than plate type valves. These valves depend on plate tension, spring strength and resilience to pressure. At each stage following compression of the air by the rising piston, the discharge valve allows air to flow to an interstage cooler. The function of this interstage cooler is to reduce the temperature of the gas and therefore through thermodynamic law increase its density. The reason for doing this is to increase the efficiency of the subsequent downstream water separator which removes condensate or humidity compressed out of the atmospheric air. This is then removed, along with small contents of carryover lubrication oil, to another safe location on a solenoid-operated time-dependent basis. Each stage of compression is protected by an overpressure device safety valve at the first stage of compression, and this is normally set to 5 bars gauge. From this first stage, we subsequently compress, rising falling piston, cooler, separator, overpressure device, a pressure indication is given for each stage of compression, and then, with moisture removed, the air moves on to the next stage. Having undergone the first, second and third stages, first into cooler, second into cooler, third into cooler, and the separation of the moisture associated with each of those stages of compression, we come to the fourth stage, after which an operational pressure of 350 bars gauge is attained. Welcome to the second module in your Schlumberger training video for the WAC UB and WAC SS23. In this module, you will learn about three additional components that support you in field operations. Pressure swing adsorption is the principal working concept for the second regenerative dryer, and it is useful to understand how this works. The Bauer Compressorin second forward dryer is similar in technology to low and medium pressure dryers used extensively throughout industry. To fully illustrate the concept and the second's unique regenerative drying process, we first have to go inside the desiccating chambers. These operate on the heatless regenerative pressure swing adsorption principle, whereby a molecular saver activated aluminer type material is used. This is also known as an adsorbent, or zyazorb, which has an affinity for moisture when air is passed across it. Welcome to the third module in your Schlumberger training video for the WAC QB and WAC SS23. Having looked at an overview of the fabric and configuration of the WAC QB and SS23, you will now learn more about maintenance schedules. The aim of this module is to provide you with an overview of maintenance requirements for the WAC QB and SS23 compressor units so that you can continue to experience the reliability and consistent operation these units have been designed to deliver. The objectives of this module are that you will understand the key requirements for daily, weekly and monthly scheduled maintenance. You will learn how to identify problems and know where to get help and information to resume operations quickly and efficiently using the in-touch system. Now let's move to the IK28.0 compressor block. Every day before the unit is put into operation, the compressor oil level must be checked and if needed, refilled to the correct level. Please note the dipstick is integral to the cap. You must check all connectors and hoses for integrity and ensure the transmission belt guard is secure. Supporting all the equipment safety features that Schlumberger have in place, before leaving the Barrow workshop, every WAC QB and SS23 is subject to over 100 physical and visual test parameters. This is to satisfy the certification of pressurised equipment requirements, and along with Detnorsky Veritas specifications, means that the unit is considered safe for operational use.
Hello and welcome to the fourth module of your Schlumberger training video, the WAC QB and WAC SS23. This module focuses on safe operations. Let's take a look at the module aims and objectives. The aim of this module is to show you the very real and ever-present dangers associated with the use of high and low pressure air and that you as field operatives all share a responsibility to follow clear procedures designed to ensure the safety of you, your colleagues, and associated equipment. The objectives of this module on safe operations are that you will understand and be able to avoid key dangers that are associated with the use of high and low pressure equipment, and that you will recognize a need for constant awareness and of supporting others to ensure safe and effective operations. Strangely hypnotic, isn't it? Relaxing even. Now let's show it to you at full speed. This is the power of a simple quarter inch hose at 2000 PSI, if incorrectly fitted or removed while still under pressure. Are you still feeling relaxed? And finally, just to really hit the message home, only a melon head would play with 5000 PSI. In terms of compressed air's brute force, it is always worth remembering that not only high pressure PSI levels need to be respected. A human skull will break at anywhere upwards of 15 PSI. Even the air that people sometimes use to blow down their workbenches and overalls at the end of the day could kill you. Air breaking through the skin and into the bloodstream, perhaps through an open wound or cut, could cause air embolism. This is when an air bubble travels along an artery and moves through a system of blood vessels that gradually become narrower. At some point, the bubble will block a small artery and cut off the blood supply to a particular area of the body. The seriousness of the blockage depends on which part of the body the artery supplies blood to. If the embolism stops blood getting to the brain, tissue in the brain will be starved of oxygen and die, causing permanent brain damage. The only effective treatment for air embolism is immediate recompression treatment in a hyperbaric chamber, which may not be possible in certain locations. The main advice uh, I'd give to somebody was, don't take air uh, lightly, compressed air. Uh, just because you've been working on it for so years and years, that um, <clears throat> it's not going to affect you. It is the silent killer. It's 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 very dangerous item to work with. Uh, I do look at it sometimes, and I am lucky to be alive because it could have been my head what was in the way and not my hand. 